What's up, everybody? This is Danny, and today we're going to be looking at the Galaxy Note 3 Android 4.4.2 update and what new features this update brings for your Galaxy Note 3. Now, I got this over the air as an update, and I am running the international version, the SMN9005. So let's go ahead and get started with the brand new features of this update. The first thing I noticed is how fast the unlock is, and it wasn't that slow before, but it's definitely noticeable, so that is a welcome change. And there's also a camera icon now on the bottom right. Swipe up and it'll take you directly to the camera straight from the lock screen. There are a few aesthetic changes that I've noticed, so if you take a look at the right upper corner, you'll see that the Wi-Fi, the signal strength and battery meter is now white to match more stock Android 4.4 KitKat. And when you pull down the notification tray, I've noticed that the font has changed a little bit to also look more like stock Android 4.4. Look where it says Air Command there, that used to be a little bit thicker. Nothing too dramatic though, I don't think many people will even notice the difference. Samsung claims that they've improved the landscape keyboard and make it easier for you to type on the Note 3. But I don't use this keyboard very much, so I wouldn't know about performance, but they did add emoji to the keyboard. If you are a huge emoji fan, then rejoice right now, for you will love the update to the keyboard. If you message a lot on the Note 3, then you will love this. Now there's a new default messaging app place where you can change your default messaging app with just one click. In that same area, you're gonna be able to find something very useful that KitKat brought over, and that is wireless printing. So now you can wireless print on your Galaxy Note 3. If you listen to music a lot on your Note 3, then this is an aesthetic change that you're really going to notice. So when you play a song here in the music app, and when you go into your lock screen, now you're gonna see full cover album art, and that's pretty nice. And it doesn't do anything for functionality, and it does work across different apps. Like if you were to play music on Spotify, then that same full cover album art is going to work on the lock screen. I've noticed some changes in the location tab, so when you click on that, you will see that there are three different modes now for location, high accuracy, power saving, and GPS only. And when you back out of that, you will also see recent location requests. So you can see apps that have requested location prior and see what the battery usage is. This might be very helpful to see what's eating up your battery that is using location. When you scroll to the bottom, you will also see Samsung apps that you can allow to use your location data. Now, if you're anything like me and not a huge fan of the TouchWiz launcher, then this tab is going to make you very happy. I personally like to use a couple of different launchers. So when you go into default applications now, you can change your messaging app here again. So there's two different places you can change that. And when you go to the home up here, then you can see that I'm running the Google Experience Launcher right now. And I can easily change right into TouchWiz by just touching TouchWiz Home and hitting the home button. And it takes me right into the TouchWiz Launcher. It's not like you couldn't do that before, but it's just a lot easier to do it this way. So I'm gonna go right back into my Google Experience Launcher, which runs fantastic on the Galaxy Note 3, and it makes it a more of a stock 4.4 experience. And I definitely recommend this launcher. Those are some great minor little features, but many of you are probably asking in your head, is this gonna make the Note 3 any faster? And it was a beast on 4.3 anyway. I never really had problems with performance, but using this for a couple of days, it could just be the placebo effect because there's new software on here, but it feels a lot faster. Things are launching faster, and I just feel like general use, everything feels a little snappier. But I will definitely let you know, or follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific, and I will definitely let you know. But on the benchmarks here, not much has changed on the quadrant side. It looks like 23,761. So let me know if that's higher or lower for you. Geekbench 3 score is 2898 on multi-core and 944 on single core. So it's pretty much the same from when I reviewed it back then. But 34,366 on Antutu is actually much higher. But these are just benchmarks, and benchmarks really don't mean that much. But I just wanted to show you just in case you wanted to see if it improved benchmarks, and on Antutu, it definitely did. Another rumor that was going around is that this update would break third-party S-View cover cases. 
And this is the Spigen Slim Armor View and it worked fine for me in Android 4.3 so I'm going to go ahead and test it out and see if it actually breaks it. The installation process is exactly the same but the S View cover function now is gone out of the Spigen case. So that's shame on you Samsung for I heard the only official cases from Samsung will now work since they have an authentication chip inside and there are some hacks that I've read about where you have to take that out but that is just silly. I cannot believe that they did that for, as you can see on my review, it worked just fine for me on Android 4.3. I'm really disappointed with that. Hopefully they reverse that very, very soon. But on the camera app, I didn't notice anything different. The one wish list thing that I had was that when I'm shooting 4K video, that it would give me some kind of video stabilization. Now I'm not even sure if that's even possible on the software side, but that's something I would love to see. And another thing that I noticed is that when you go into the developers options, that Android runtime is not available here. It's not supported yet. So hopefully that will come in the future like the Nexus 5. Speaking of the Nexus 5, I really like the dialer from there, the smart dialer, and that also did not make it on this version for the Galaxy Note 3. What do you guys think about this update for the Note 3? Did I miss anything on here? Make sure you comment in the comment section below. I think I missed the Galaxy Gear update that was on this. It's supposed to improve connectivity with the Galaxy Gear. So you're gonna have to update your gear manager. But everything else I think I covered. I think this is a great update for a great phone. So I'm glad to see 4.4 KitKat on another device besides the Nexus or the Moto X. So let me know if you've gotten your KitKat update and how you like it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and follow me on Twitter at SuperScientific if you have any questions. And thanks for watching this video guys. I'll see you in the next one.